Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to Dad's Eye View. Parenting is already tough. However, parenting after divorce serves up a challenge that may be insurmountable. With divorce rates skyrocketing, it is leaving in its path more and more children being raised in single parent homes. Hence, the issue of parenting after divorce starts with understanding how it affects your ability to overcome the change in your parental circumstance. Beyond Divorce is a company Jerry Radigan created as a result of her own divorce, even though she has had lots of skills from coaching and counseling and she gets lots of help, she knew that she needed more. She also saw other divorced women and their need for more support and what they were getting weren't enough either. So she went out, she searched, she researched, she invested in cutting edge human potential information and training and she found the best stuff around. She began working on herself first because it was she that she needed to be at peace, and as a result, she loves herself more than she could ever imagine. She, ex she is excited about where her life is going and excited about sharing her journey with you today. Beyond Divorce's mission is to provide a welcoming, supportive environment for midwife divorced women to connect, get support, information, and the best assistance available so that they can create bold, joyous lives as fully self-expressed women. So why is Miss Radigan doing Dad's Eye View <laughs> if her work is so much for women? Well, there's two reasons. One is divorce takes two. And as of late, she has gotten an increasing amount of calls from men. Um, welcome to Dad's Eye View. Hi, um, Kenny. Jerry, it's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, we've had um, some time to talk about this issue of divorce. Yeah. Um, and in our conversation, I really tried to um, explain to you the need um, for men and fathers to kind of understand their role and impact in divorce as well as women, which aren't that much different, but there are um, some nuances. But before we begin, tell me a little bit about Beyond Divorce. Well, you, you said a lot you, uh, with your introduction. Uh, my divorce brought me to my knees. Mm -hmm. I was really shocked at how difficult it was. I thought, oh, it'll take me a year, mm -hmm. and I'll just use all the stuff that I learned in my coach training. Mm -hmm. And after a year, I wasn't able to get out of bed. Wow. And mm -hmm. I found that the woman, the, the man who was my soulmate, I thought, for 24 years, uh, became my worst enemy. Mm. And I, I was really devastated by that and mm. uh, knew that there was a lot more. And so I got myself to California. I got some, some deep training um, that not only helped me to become a better coach, but helped me to love myself more than I could have ever imagined. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me to understand that philosophy that I knew was just a philosophy, but now I embodied it. Okay. It, became, it, I, it became really important to me, was loving yourself is the first, the foremost, the, the most important, the deepest thing that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And I hear so many people say, I love myself. <laughs> they say, I love myself. Right. And then when I get to talk to them a little bit, I find areas where they don't. And even in my own life, I find that, oh, here's another place where mm -hmm. I need to send that love. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really is so essential in our relationships and especially as parents. Mm -hmm. You know, when you separate in relationships and particularly divorce, you know, yeah. there is this sense of failure um, that somehow um, you have failed yourself. Yeah. Um, in the case of parenting, you fail your children. <clears throat> and there's a deep, dark space that you find yeah, yourself yes. in, you know, after a separation, particularly in divorce. Mm -hmm. How do you begin, you know, to see the light, you know, at the end of that deep, dark space, you know, when you are looking at the situation as a failure? It can feel like a very deep, dark space. Uh, and the truth is, for most people in relationships, we think, 
and most people, a lot of people probably still think this, mm -hmm. but we think that love comes from somebody else mm -hmm. outside of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we reach out to this other person. There's that whole idea from uh, the Jerry Maguire movie. Okay. And it, he, he walks in and says, you complete me. Wow. <laughs> and we all are looking for this other person to make us happy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, and it's, yeah. it's not the way it is. <laughs> You know, we're, um, I guess, romantic at heart. Yes, you know, know. we I love know. the great love story. You know, mm -hmm. we love to see the two individuals at the end of the day galloping across the lily fields, you <laughs> yes, know, into know. a form and a warm, fuzzy embrace mm -hmm. with the sunrise behind them and the birds tweeting and the butterflies flying. Yes, and all exactly. Of those things. Yeah, you're right. And then all of a sudden, the film rips. Right. Mm -hmm. And when the film rips, there is the man on one side and there is the woman on the other side and the children <clears throat> somewhere um, in the midst of that. Yes. Um, what is talk to me about some of the stages that you go through, you know, once you are divorced, because we know that, you know, there are several things that happen, right. um, everything from anger, <clears throat> denial. Um, all of these kind of things, and they, and they do come in stages, and I don't think mm -hmm. people really realize sometimes that as they're going through these kind of relationship breakups that there are stages. Right. Well, depending on who you read, uh, they're going to call the stages different things, but they come down to, at first, a sense of betrayal, mm -hmm. and then anger, and war, and illusion. Mm -hmm. You start saying, you know, what was I thinking? Where was I? My head was in the sand. I thought that it, it was one way, but then it's not. Mm -hmm. And there's an awful lot of people that can stay stuck in that gulf of victimhood mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. I've talked to many people who have been divorced for decades mm -hmm. who are still blaming their ex-husband or ex-wife right. for the pain. I talked to a client not too long ago who was still blaming her ex-husband after 10 years for ruining her life. Wow. But at least she was open to it and she made some changes. Mm -hmm. So what is really important is to get to that place where you have, uh, you start to forgive the ex-partner. Mm -hmm. That's not easy. That yeah. takes a lot of work. <clears throat> yeah, forgiveness is not an easy thing. You know, I've often heard people <laughs> say, you know, um, I'll forgive but I'm not going to forget. That's and like saying, I'm not going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you know, but that makes them feel good in the mm -hmm. moment. You know, right. it really is a, is a, 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 um, a momentary feel good. They're, they're you, giving lip service to right. this. It's, a very, it's very deep work. Mm -hmm. But how do you start to forgive? What does true forgiveness look like? Well, first of all, understand that it's this path is about you going within yourself and it does require deep work and when we are angry we're pointing a finger at the other person and take a look at my hand one finger is pointing at you and three or three are pointing back mm -hmm. right so take a look at and this requires really asking yourself some deep questions doing some journaling mm -hmm. uh, all right if if she did this what was my part in that right. mm -hmm. and we don't want to look at that. No. But that's where the real gold is. Mm -hmm. That's where uh, the growth really takes place. Yeah, it really is a, a hard thing. Yes. You're um, watching Dad's Eye View. Um, my guest today, Jerry Radigan, she's with Beyond Divorce. And we're talking about divorce and its issues, and at some point we're going to talk a little bit about its impact, you know, on children. You know, but you are a divorce person and you're sitting there and you're looking at your life, you know, because mm -hmm. basically that's what we do. We try to go back and figure out all the places that we did things wrong and all the places that we did right, trying to pinpoint that location and place mm -hmm. where things went wrong. Okay. And so, and it's very difficult to do that, you know, as someone who um, had an early marriage in my life, you know, mm -hmm. when I was young, you know, wasn't young and dumb is what I call myself. I don't call her that. I call, you know, because mm -hmm. I can only speak for me. Um, and then over 30, 35 years or so being single and running, you know, with gasoline drawers on fire, you know, away from this notion of marriage, you know, only to, you know, a few months ago to be, to get married again um, to my current wife. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it took me almost 30 years to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so, but what I've learned from it is that 
the relationship um, is a day-to-day -day journey, it's something that you have to commit to day-to-day to day-to-day. -to -day. And often as me and my wife have conversations about our relationship, we often twist and we have a conversation about the relationship between myself and my daughter's mother. And I always share with her that sometimes that relationship is, takes much more work on my behalf to maintain and to keep where it is, which is a very beautiful relationship now, than it does to maintain my current mm -hmm. marriage. And I think that when people get divorced, they forget that because the first thing that they do is begin to look for the new love and the mm -hmm. new start and the new journey, thinking that somehow that relieves them from the situation that they've just left, particularly if they have children involved. You know, how do you begin to start that journey? You started that journey by looking into yourself, but what are some of the practical things that you do when it's time to start looking forward but being mindful of what you're leaving behind? But looking forward in terms of your relationship with your ex-partner who yes. is the parent, mm -hmm. uh, to stop and not blame that person. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's like a basic one. <laughs> to turn off the mental, we've got this mental stuff that goes on. We, it, we just repeat over and over. He did that wrong, she did that wrong, over and over and over, to step away from that mm -hmm. and to recognize this is a philosophy to embrace that will really help. Uh, everyone's doing the best they can, mm -hmm. even if it was terrible. Right. They do, they do the best they can. This mm -hmm. person is your, uh, they're going to be your partner in parenting. Mm -hmm. No matter how close they are to the child, they're still going to be there mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. What can you see? This is going to take work. This is, uh, this is a real discipline. What do you see that's good about them mm -hmm. right now? The fact that maybe they're calling, asking how the child is. Mm -hmm. What if they're yelling at you? Mm -hmm. Can you just step away and just say, look, I don't understand why they're yelling, but I'm not going to get upset about this. I know that this is just my stuff that's allowing me to get upset. I'm just going to take a break from that and just realize it's really about the child mm -hmm. and what's important about the child. That requires a lot from people to do, especially in the early stages. There is a mask, you know, um, of... I can't let, there's a commercial used to say, never let them see you sweat. And so there's this mask that you have to put on when you're separating and then after divorce where you can't allow your vulnerability to be seen by others, particularly your children. And so, you know, as men, we tend to, we put on the mask, right? <clears throat> but then we cover the mask with something else. Ten, men tend to be a bit harsh with right. their ex. Right. They tend to start telling them all the things that they're doing wrong. Right. That's, that's certainly the thing that I've seen. Uh, I'm not saying that women don't also have their own mask, mm -hmm. but women respond to uh, good feedback, to compliments. Mm -hmm. you, hey, you're doing this right. Try a little more tenderness, mm -hmm. as okay. they say. Right. Uh, but to insult the person is not going to get you anywhere. Right. And, and you probably know that, but mm -hmm. people do need to be reminded mm -hmm. in the beginning. But as men and women, we do kind of deal with the situation much differently. You know, and I want to talk yeah. to you a little bit about, you know, particularly, you know, how women deal with it. Because I think that men are so chaotic in their response. Mm -hmm. A, because they're not clear of what's happening to themselves. They're in clear denial about what's yes, happening with yes, their yeah. own feelings. And B, they're not understanding what the woman is going through. Mm -hmm. And so I always say, particularly with children, because, you know, there's some things that traditionally we try to say, you know, that's not so much no more. This is now 2011. It's not that way mm -hmm. that, that anymore. And that's not true. No, it can be very devastating for you children. Know, yeah. Traditionally, it's still somewhat the same way. For some odd reason, men find it much easier to lift up and leave and not look back mm -hmm. than mothers do. So the reality mm -hmm. in that situation, when we talk about the mask, is um, how does a Give, give me some insight, and for the men who may be watching, some insight on what that mask is covering for a mother who's trying not to allow her children to see the impact that this separation mm -hmm. is having on her. Well, for, 
the masks that I see with people, uh, we talked a little bit about self-esteem and how, how we're looking for it from somebody else, and then we have to learn how to get it from ourselves. When we are feeling bad about ourselves, uh, men tend to become grandiose. Mm -hmm. They tend to maybe brag a bit, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a lot, mm -hmm. and they, with their ex-partner, they can be uh, abrasive. Uh, this is not, this is just in general. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Women inside go into shame mm. and they feel really horrible about themselves. So when you've got these two dynamics with her going into the shame, she might have a mask of being tough or something, mm -hmm. uh, and him going into this grandiosity and, it, and maybe it, she's taking it as attacking, she's going to feel like he's trying to uh, grind her into the ground. Why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's got to understand that she's feeling vulnerable and he, she's got to understand that he's feeling vulnerable too. Mm -hmm. Even though he's acting in this <laughs> this way, like, like you know, I would never say that to you, I would never do that to you. Right. That's still uh, a vulnerability. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I used to, I did a lot of DJing when I was um, coming up in my life and I used to always tell people that there was one thing that I never wanted to become and that was the old guy in the club. You know, every party you go to and every club you go to, there's always this old guy that's there, someone who is clearly out of place you know, okay. with everybody else. He's right. trying to dress like the crowd. He's trying to he's look trying like, to be the, something uh, he's like not. the old Sesame Street thing. Something <laughs> yeah. here is not like the others. Something right, that doesn't right. belong. <laughs> you know, and underneath him is this story. Right? And a lot of times there's this story of running from something and you're trying to recapture um, this place in your youth that makes you feel good. And oftentimes as men, when we do run, is in the chase for this thing that makes me feel momentarily good. I go and buy the new car that you know I couldn't buy because I was in the mm -hmm. house with my family. I go find the young girl you know mm -hmm. that I didn't have you know in my family. All these things that we think um, that make us mm -hmm. feel good in denial of the thing that makes us feel bad. But right. the ironic piece in that that the ironic piece in that is that no matter how far you run for the good, the bad never disappears, <laughs> no. and, right? right? And right. so we're less um, apt to deal with that painful space than women are to deal with those. And I believe That's that true. when yeah. women finally get over that painful space, it is very difficult for men to handle that because they're trying to figure out how does she do that? <laughs> right? Why is she not responding to my yelling anymore? Mm -hmm. Why is mm -hmm. she not responding to my chaotic behavior anymore? You know, right. why is she not feeling, why does she have a smile on her face every time I come pick up the kids? What is that all about? It must be someone else right. there. And so, you know, with that dynamic, you know, of both men, you know, and, and women, you know, how do you begin the process of healing? you know, to the two of you. And, and a lot of that healing becomes in communication. A lot of times we can't begin this process of healing because we quite simply just don't know what to say to each other. Right. Uh, we don't know, you know, if we should even say, how was your day? Right. You know, we don't know if we should say, how do you feel? Or we don't know if we should say, is there anything I could do, you mm -hmm. know, to help? You know, how do you begin that communicative process? Some relationships never get there, so, but I, I want to commend you for getting there because mm -hmm. that can, can be uh, a, a very difficult thing. Both people have to be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's really about going within and doing your own work mm -hmm. on the inside. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing else. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, it, this is really a gift. When you go through something that difficult, uh, it's your opportunity because we all have our uh, baggage that's locked down in the basement mm -hmm. that wasn't even about the marriage. It mm -hmm. was about our past. We all marry our parents. <laughs> yeah, right. <Thanks. laughs> we marry those issues and those issues come up for us mm -hmm. to heal. Mm -hmm. And if they don't happen in the relationship, they start really rattling the cages mm -hmm. when we break up. Right. Uh, so that's your opportunity. Uh, so how do you, you're asking how do you heal so that you can work together? Right. Uh, you get to the point where you can see that other person 
as the greatest gift in the world to you okay. because they provoked all those things in your basement that you were hiding from mm -hmm. and they helped you to bring it to the surface. Right. So you see them as like, thank you, you're a gift. Now how do you heal? Uh, I mean, I work with people to do that, uh, but I suggest journaling. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, tremendous uh, opportunity. Just ask yourself questions. Just be with whatever is. Uh, turn off that internal critic. Who cares if you write correctly, if you spell correctly, if you write outside the margins? Nobody cares. Right. You're writing to yourself. Write it like just everything that comes out. Call him or her, every name in the book. Nobody's going to see it. Mm -hmm. But after you've done this for a number of pages, you'll, number, you'll know that you'll start feeling better. Then ask yourself, well, how do I feel under that? What was that covering? Right. And then to dive into that even more. Mm -hmm. And then take full responsibility for loving yourself. Right. I'm talking about to the core. Look in the mirror. Can you look in the mirror and say, <laughs> I love you even though you completely messed up? Right. I love everything about you. Mm -hmm. uh, even though you're not perfect, I love everything. I am going to take responsibility for that. From that love, you can look at your children and see the beauty in them. You can be available to them uh, when, because you've cleared out your own stress. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to be present. Right. Again, you're watching Dad's Eye View with your host, Kenneth Braswell, my guest today, Jerry Radigan, and she's with Beyond Divorce. And we're talking about um, elements of divorce and particularly trying to drill down um, in this issue. Um, my plan is to bring her back because as I was thinking last night after our conversation, there were several things that I said, you know what, well, we can't do this in 30 minutes. We got to come back and really just <laughs> stick to this particular mm -hmm. area. And so in that vein, I want to kind of go back um, to a place where we were before because I really want to um, give people some insight and some suggestions on how to function in that dark place that we just talked it about. It um, it's a dark place and it's a hard place. You said something earlier um, in the show um, with regards to your own experience um, where you just laid in the bed, right? And so you're laying in the bed and we know that that laying in the bed looks a lot like depression. And so we're going to come back. We're not going to sure. touch the depression piece right now because that's a whole nother yes. can yeah, I was of there. Worms, yes, right? sure. the depression piece. And so uh, while we can get people to the fundamentals of walking through their day to day life, the most difficult time for them is in that on that bed, curled up in a knot trying to just pray that this thing will go away and go away very quickly. Mm -hmm. When you had your most intimate conversations with yourself about encouraging <clears throat> your own self to get up and move, what did that sound like to you? Uh, well, some of it sounded like I'm never going to get there. Mm. I'm going to be here for a long time, mm -hmm. and that's when I started to uh, do the journaling work okay. and just saying, I know I can do this, all right? All right? And then I had to, uh, just a little at a time, say, all right, maybe I'm not where I want to be. Maybe things aren't as great as I want them to be, so I need to focus on the one little thing that I like about myself, mm -hmm. which was for me, I had two great kids. Okay. Yeah. So that's the one little thing. Okay. And then I said, all right, so what else can I focus on? Because it became about taking full responsibility for my mental processes. Okay. What was going on in my mind? Because it's so easy. There's this current of negativity mm -hmm. that just. <clears throat> just speeds by your mind. Okay. And when I would hear from my ex-husband, all this negative stuff would come up, and because I, we, we often don't realize all the things. For a while, there's a lot of stuff that you didn't want to admit to yourself that was going on in your marriage. Mm -hmm. So it takes a while to start to bring that up, and that even gets more depressing. Wow. But you've got to embrace that. You've got to look at, this is the most dark, this is the most negative. Let me be with that, mm -hmm. and yet let me see the one little thing that's good about me, about my life, especially my kids. Mm -hmm. And then I, I blessed to be to have some great work. Mm -hmm. uh, I've helped some great some people do some great things in my life. Right. So let me focus on those. Yeah. And what am I good at? What am I talented <laughs> at? And then look at those. And then also say, 
well, I really stink at this, but I still love myself. Right. <laughs> so, so, but that was, and it's about doing everything you can mm -hmm. to feel really good. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a, it's a 24-hour dis uh, a day discipline. So you talked about advice, and I'm sure an old friend of mine told me one time, and I never forgot this. She said, make sure that your relationship has friends. Because typically we go along in life and the wife has friends and the husband has friends. Mm -hmm. And when it gets hard, undoubtedly those friends take side. Absolutely, that's and very And she painful. said to make sure that your relationship has friends. That's very different from friends of you and her. Yeah. So that when things get bad, there are people who are interested and love your relationship, mm -hmm. which means that the advice that you're going to get is going to be sound advice with the end goal being that they are helping the relationship and not necessarily one person or the other person. Right. Very quickly, because we have about five minutes but we can't talk about this a little bit how do you separate the good advice and the bad advice <laughs> <laughs> because the good and bad advice feels good right, right. the right. good advice doesn't feel so good but how do you separate those two I think that we discount our own uh, intuition far too much we need to follow uh, guidance that's in here and yes it can come from someone else but when you can trust your heart and your heart says yes this person is giving me something that makes me feel like uh, my heart sings when I hear that mm -hmm. you know that that makes all the difference uh, is it self-serving we, we can tell <laughs> if somebody is giving advice that's self-serving there's whole segments uh, the, you know there's whole segments of uh, society like certain professions that you know there may be a lot of men in that profession and they have an undercurrent of not liking women mm -hmm. and they can uh, harm a relationship and there are there's the same thing there's certain women that don't like men so you don't want to go with that advice mm -hmm. you want to go with someone who loves you both right yeah absolutely yeah. Um, this is a off-track question and I'm only okay. going to ask you this I'm dying um, to hear it <laughs> because we all go through it when you were going through, because this is what I call that, I call yeah. that going through, right? Mm -hmm. There's certain things that we do when we're going through. So I'm gonna ask you two questions. Okay. What was the best movie you watched when you were going through? The best you? movie I yeah. watched? Uh, the Secret. The Secret. Did you see that one? I know of it, yes. Yes, the, but the Law of Attraction. I was teaching Law of Attraction before that, but uh, I had a party and invited a bunch of people over. Mm -hmm. So I made sure to have a great community, and I shared <laughs> that movie with them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was All right, was and the second best. song, what was the yeah. song you listened to? Because we all had a song. Uh, the song I listened to when I was going through my divorce. Yeah. I wish I could give you one. I, I do so much with music. I, I uh, can't think one. of one. No. Yeah, no. there's always just like one song that like when I was going through. Right. Um, yeah, I don't ask me how I caught this song. I just happened to be watching TV. Um, this is when I was going through my last um, relationship separation. Right. Um, uh, 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 oh my goodness, why is, it, is his name? Mm -hmm. Keith Urban um, did a song called I'll, You'll Think of Me. Okay. And it was such an empowering song for me because it helped me in that kind of space. It gave me some encouragement. And the lyrics basically said, you know, you can leave, take all your money, you can do, do whatever thing. Right. But at some point in your life, you'll think of me. Right, right. Right. You'll think about who I was to you, and it was. The, and I played that song. Oh my God! Two thousand. <laughs> sounds like you might have tortured yourself with it. <laughs> two thousand times I played that song. So I always often ask people that it's kind of a like because we all have our song and we all yeah, you know I mean, have our. I, I guess I'm I'm a new per I'm a different person. I can't think of one song. But now you're gonna go back. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna about have to think. What have. was that song? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're watching Dad's Eye View. Um, I'm your host Kenneth Braswell. My guest today. Jerry Radigan. She's with Beyond Divorce. Um, she has a website and she has a number that I want her to share with you. And I also want her to very quickly um, talk about a pamphlet called Despair to Freedom, the gift of, the, of divorce that you can actually download on her website. Yes, you can. It's, it's, at, it's at CoachJerry.com, which is what it says on the 
uh, pamphlet, but it also uh, you can also reach it at beyonddivorce.net. Okay. And you just right there, right in the upper right hand corner, just give me your your uh, name and your email, and I will gladly send you that book for free. Okay. And your yeah. telephone number for people to reach you? Five one eight. Two seven nine four two eight three. Jerry, thanks so much. Thank you uh, for joining us. Um, divorce is never easy. Um, relationships are even less easy. Um, <laughs> but you can do it. You can overcome it. You know, I'm. You know, I'm a survivor. You know, I overcame so, it, yeah. and I have the best of relationship today. But I could tell you now that it was not easy. But when you get there, it is worth it. Um, God bless you all, and I'll see you next time on Dad's Eye View. chances with you in my life than to is how I might turn out without you. I want you and I need you in my life. Don't leave me out here to figure it all out alone. It's not too late. It's never too late. It's never too late to be a father to your son. Support the Ties Never Broken campaign. Together we can change lives and strengthen the ties between fathers and sons all over the globe. Visit our website at www.fathersincorporated.com. You can also find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash Ties Never Broken and on Twitter at Fathers Incorp.